voglio presentare uh, le regole del game changing. Sono molto felice di avere l'occasione di parlare di game changing perché, è un, diciamo, basta la ricerca sulla cosa e tu stai cambiando di game nella tua mente. Allora, vi ho proposto una cosa importante, mi sembra. Tanti di voi avete bisogno o desiderio di fare un game changing operazione, ma sarebbe bene di pensare a quello quella situazione che voi volete cambiare, sentendo tutta la giornata dei modelli a disposizione, brillanti, infatti, che si possono presentare qua. Primo modello di tutto, possiamo dire, potrebbe essere Alessandro il Grande, che ha tagliato il nodo gordiano. Dopodiché passo all'inglese. Uh, diciamo, uh, che ha fatto? Si diceva che quello che poteva Sfilare questo nodo, snodarlo, sarebbe eh, il conquistatore del, dell'Asia. Lui provando di tirare, trovare dove il, il, il punto di partenza di questo nodo, ha deciso, bah, presso la spada, boom, era tagliato e è divenuto infatti l'imperatore dell'Asia. È un, un esempio un po' brutale, però fondamentalmente che è game changing? Un esempio di game changing, molto carino, però quando cerco la definizione, la definizione di game changing, trovo cose piuttosto banali, diciamo, uh, tipo Collins. Completely changing the way something is done, something is thought or something is made, that's by Collins. Having the potential to change the outcome of something. These are, these are very boring. They're very boring definition, and, and, and there are many like that, so I will spare you. My own is that actually you are dealing with a game. A game ought to bring the experience of fun, of enjoyment, of excitement. That's the whole idea. And a game is also something that is set up. I'll show you one that you all know very well, very soon. It has to be set up in such a way that it can actually be changed, broken, played out of the various things. So you have to have, it has to be, you have to have a sense of fun when you want to change, change the game. You have to feel loose, you have to feel cool. We'll work at it. Um, this, this man is obviously having a tremendous fun. We'll see him at the end showing his, uh, showing his delight in all the innovations that he is creating. I think there's about tw 20 of them or so. I don't think we'll go all the way, but You see what you can, what does he do? He takes something which is usually used for one single purpose, decided to push, it that, push that purpose to the side and reconstitute the object in such a way that it can be used for, as you can see, dozens, dozens of things. There he is, and looking so pleased, and I think we'll, we'll skip the rest, but in any case, you can see that he is, Uh, endlessly trying to apply his basic principle of moving the figure aside and reprobing the ground of whatever it is that wants to be done. Good, I think this moves. Um, I have taken this, uh, this series of uh, game-changing women. Yes, no, I have, a, I have a weak spot for women, and so I'm very happy to promote here six women who actually were at the basis of very big game-changing Uh, procedures. Alda Lovelace, who actually created, she was supposed to be the first computer programmer, she created the first algorithm from which she was working with Babbage, and you know Babbage is part of the history of computer. Her work changes a whole direction of innovation and, and thinking. Um, Elizabeth Maggi, she invented the game. The game. How many of your lives have been changed by Monopoly? How many fights do you have with your best friends over Monopoly? How many reconciliations happened? Oh, you know, this is the game. Anyway, she invented it in 1904, and it became Monopoly, but then it was called the Landlord's Game. Maria Telkes, residential solar heating. Why well, she's there first? Maria Telkes, anyway, invented solar heating. The reason the one I'm missing is, a, is another uh, inventor um, who invented the uh, uh, central heating in the end of the, in, in 1919. 
and now her name escapes me. Anyway, she might show up. Hedy Lamar. You all know who Hedy Lamar is. One of the most, you know, bombshells of the, uh, of the, of the screen uh, in the 30s and 40s. And, and uh, she became the assistant of people who were working during the war at guiding torpedoes to their target. And she invented that particular program that led to uh, the, uh, the discovery of Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth. All of this starts with the work of this woman, who was also a fantabulous actress, right? Uh, oh, here's my <laughs> inventor of the central heating, 1919, Shirley Brown. And Shirley Brown invented uh, the... Um, she basically invented the system to uh, program all the, all, the continue, all the content, all the relationship between, uh, between our internet protocols. And she's one of the most uh, founder of this thing. Of course, I'm, I'm ending with her because uh, she is representing the innovation in the world of networks. Networks have changed everything. We are in a condition with networks of permanent game changing or being victim of game changing because game changing also means disruptions. What I wanted to say about this is that when you think about uh, what's happening today, it, all, the, all the, our innovations are game changing innovations. All of them that we are practicing on the internet are uh, extraordinary rethinking of the whole economy. I'm looking at the, the, the fantastic meaning of crowdfunding, for example. Crowdfunding is a basic game changer for the economy because you put your money where your heart is. When you fund something that you have selected, instead of putting your money into something that you don't connect with in any ways, Suddenly, people are saying, we want this to happen, we're going to pay for it, and might, it might even make, you know, some return. So that's a brilliant idea. 3D stamping. 3D stamping is an extraordinary game changing. That's, you know, it's Marx, Marx's dream realized. Put the, you know, the means of production in the hands of the worker, and bingo, you've got a real maturation of, 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 of the... Uh, of, of communism such, in such ways. It didn't really quite happen that way, as we know. Um, although it's not networks, stem, we'll be hearing about stem cell uh, uh, technology, and that's an extraordinary game changer as well. We have, we, we're, we're living in a time of constant game changing. There is an Italian game changer who has followed the example of Airbnb uh, and, uh, and, and, and uh, Uber, and what he has invented is Thumbtack, which is any service. Lessons for your, your child before he goes to his exam, uh, piano lessons, somebody bringing, making a meal for you. All of this is now available on time, in, 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 in real time. So, I was saying how to be a game changer, as you, coming back to my little suggestion that you take your game in mind. What, you know, uh, what does it take to be a game changer? It takes a sense of fun, first and all. And also the attitude, I didn't know it could be done. You know, there are lots of people who happen on changing a situation because they never thought, as everybody else had thought, that it couldn't be done. You have to be curious. You have to be experimental. You have to just ask yourself, but it's not enough. And that's why I talked about rules. I have five rules. First, you check the ground, not the figure. Here, you will have a very good explanation uh, by Harley Dubois in the, this session of what it is to step outside of your role, your image, your identity, or your problem and see it whole. What's, ask yourself, what's the ground of the situation? Then try to imagine that situation without its ground. Remove the ground, leave the figures floating, whatever that is, and then you actually can loosen up your stock responses. We have stock, when we have a problem, we have stock responses, which is to address the problem without looking outside of it. And in fact, the moment we do, we find that we can resolve the problem. I have a lovely example, and you can take the number, it's a useful one if you live in Rome. Um, it's uh, my taxi driver who was responding to the Uber challenge. As you know, Uber is, is taking the, 
the bread from the mouth of the taxi driver. So the figure was to compete with Uber. The ground is the instant availability. You have to be instantly available. And in fact, taxis are more numerous and more available than normal cars. He decides that he's going to give a break to the, uh, the, the person who takes the taxi to go to the airport. And at the same time, if he can do it, he has a team of friends, taxi drivers, who can actually present themselves and actually do the job. Take that number before I, I lose it, and, um, and, and we will move on to the second rule, which is changing the ground. The ground on the left is represented by Anteus. Anteus is being lifted by Hercules. It's one of the works that he had to do, because Anteus is the son of Gea, he's the son of, of the earth, and whenever his foot touches the earth, he gets enormous strength. And in order to beat Anteus, the only way Hercules can do it is by lifting Anteus so that he doesn't have contact with the ground anymore. That's exactly what Cleisthenes, one of the most brilliant lawmakers of Greece, did. Instead of letting all the powerful tribes around Athens rule the, the, rule the society, he decided to draw in Athens very specific lines, lifting the ground from the tribal setting and putting everybody on the same footing, meaning, actually, the beginning of democracy. The real understanding of democracy, we share common grounds, whatever our status, social status is. Very good one. Another one that I'll skip because I really don't have time uh, is uh, Colbert, who re-centralizes France to avoid the attacks of the Fronde, which was all the aristocrats fighting the power of the king. Rule number two, very quickly, consider the effect, not just the cause. Uh, we are, you are going to listen to Candice Johnson, a right after me. She is already a member of the e resident She's an e-resident of Estonia, although born in the United States and living in France. Uh, you know, I actually am waiting for my card. I'm also going to become an e-resident. Why? Because uh, it allows you to actually conduct business in, uh, in Estonia from wherever you are, Canada, Rome, Palestine, wherever you are, and having guaranteed security and guaranteed legality, something that Candice Johnson reminded me of today. She said, you are going to be absolutely sure that it's guaranteed by laws of the government of Estonia and is not an offshore tax evasion, Panama paper kind of thing. Um, rule number three, take every breakdown and turn it into a breakthrough. Something the old Chinese sign apparently says as well. Uh, two examples, uh, sildenafil was initially developed to help people who had heart problem, but it actually didn't work that way, but it was great for you know, erectile dysfunction and became Viagra. Uh, the other example is, uh, <laughs> is just as gross. It's by Cornelius Gross, who has located he located how to remove memories from your brain, trying to know how memory itself was encoded. He was really trying to work on memory. He actually worked on forgetting, which is very good. So, you know, the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. Remind, remember that one? So that's a good example. Um, think viral. I'll, I'll, again, I have to really make it fast. Think viral. Share the idea. Get opinion. Work on it. Make it viral, make it, you know, get, get people to talk about it. And then you have uh, any, any, any good crowdfunding project, and there are tons of them, actually gives you, gives you that example. Okay, rule number five, keep calm and change the game.